This is a magnetic flux gate compass system. Magnetic compasses are oriented towards the North Pole as the Earth is a large magnet. However, magnetic compasses are subject to quite a number of errors. One occurs from the fact that near the polar regions, the magnetic lines of flux are almost vertical. The Earth is basically a magnet with a North Pole and a South Pole and magnetic lines of flux go from the South Pole up to the North Pole. Near the Earth's equator, the lines of flux are horizontal. But as you get towards the polar region, the lines of flux become more vertical. So at the poles, the line of flux is almost 100% vertically oriented, and at the equator, almost 100% horizontally oriented. And in between, there is both a horizontal and a vertical component. This makes compass readings very inaccurate up at the poles because the compass needle is actually pulled down and not directed laterally to the north, south, east, or west as it would be at the equator. Uh, for other reasons, when an airplane is turning to the <coughs> west or east, away from a northerly or southerly heading there is an error in the compass reading due to the compass being tilted and being affected by these vertical uh, components of the line of flux. In addition to the vertical component of the lines of flux there are several other sources of magnetic compass error. Although the problems are most generally pronounced at the higher latitudes near the poles problems arise within the aircraft itself. The airplane becomes magnetized in its production. Welding of the aircraft components can magnetize iron or steel portions of the airplane. In addition, over time the airplane may become magnetized as different pieces of metal are added or subtracted. Finally, uh, running electrical current through the devices in the aircraft also generate magnetic fields that can interfere with a magnetic compass. The Fluxgate compass system was developed to avoid these issues. It is composed of a flux gate which is gyroscopically stabilized, an amplifier to take in the signals and amplify them and also stimulate portions of the indicators, a master indicator here and a repeater indicator or remote indicator which would be located elsewhere in the aircraft. The master indicator would generally be located at the navigator's station. The portion of the system that contains the flux gate and the gyroscope that stabilizes it is called the transmitter. The transmitter has this gyroscope which you can see spinning here and this stabilizes the flux gate to avoid errors induced when the aircraft turns or banks. You can see the small metal ball revolving around in here and that is part of the gyroscopic erection mechanism. When the gyroscope tilts the ball rolls downhill faster than it rolls uphill and therefore it spends less time on the downhill portion of the cycle and more time on the uphill portion and generates more pressure downward on the uphill si side of the cycle which pushes down on the gyro and causes it to uh, return to an erect status. The transmitter runs off of 110 volt 400 cycle alternating current as does the amplifier. The flux gate it consists of three metal windings assembled in a triangular fashion and they are located underneath the gyroscope. This component is the amplifier which forms the heart of the system. It, as mentioned before, it also runs off of 110 volt 400 cycle alternating current. This connects it to the transmitter and this connects to the master indicator. The master indicator likewise has three major components. It has an autosyn, a magnesyn, and a motor to drive the system. 
the auto send takes amplified signals from the transmitter and operates the auto send rotor and stator system which is connected in a gear fashion to a small motor which drives the compass needle. The Magnuson uses magnets rather than induced signals to create a magnetic field and they receive the signals and are transmitted from the Magnuson in the master indicator to the Magnuson in the repeater indicator. Here you can see the system is fired up and we'll demonstrate that as we rotate the flux gate system we will see the master indicator and the repeater indicator change heading. There are numerous advantages to the flux gate system over a magnetic compass, including the fact that the transmitter could be located well away from the central portion of the airplane out in the wing or some other part of the airplane where it would be much less subject to magnetic fields induced by the operation of other electronic instruments and devices. Now, the compass is not subject to any turning errors and it works well in rough air or in a climb or a dive and also uh, work much better at the higher latitudes.